Hi, I'm Clarissa Arthur. I happen to be Pastor Arthur's wife, and it's a privilege and an honor to have the opportunity to minister our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to you. Thank you for joining us for the broadcast. It is always a privilege, an honor, and a joy to deliver the Word of God into your home, to your family, and into your heart. We trust that this word has been a blessing to you and that there will be some life-changing word that will go forth and impact you for the rest of your life. Please continue to enjoy us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Give thanks unto him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He gives it to us now. How you can make the word of God flesh to you. Welcome to This Word Is Your Life with Pastor Alexander Arthur. Today, Dr. Arthur continues his series, The Law of Increase. Now, let's go to the story so we can tease out the principles of it for you this morning. Go to 1 Kings chapter 17. The law of increase in bad economic times. What did I say? First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Imagine a man, a prophet, standing before the king of his day and telling the king, listen, the king, I want you to know something. You are not going to have in this land rain because I spoke it and there will be no rain until I speak it again that it will rain. Now, if he presumed and said it because God hadn't told him to say it, what he said would not come to pass, right? But if he said it and it comes to pass, obviously God told him that, right? Would you agree? Yes. Talk to me. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Don't be afraid in church. You know, just, just talk. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I ask you to, okay? <laughs> All right, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, you see, now you know. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, and the word of the Lord. Listen, and the word of the Lord. Who is the word of the Lord? Jesus. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, the word speaks. Because the word is a living being. And the word of the Lord came unto you. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Kerith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now, it has no rain so there is famine in the land and God is telling this prophet to leave and go to a particular brook. A particular one. Not any other brook, but a particular one. He didn't go to the brook called Cumberland. <laughs> Hello. He went, he went to the brook called what? Kareth. Because that's why the word of the Lord that came to him, that word of the Lord was specific and said to him to go to the brook Kareth that is before Jordan. All right? Let's move on. So then, verse 6, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh. Now you think about it. You know what a raven is? a little bird. Have you seen a raven before? It's a little small bird. And the God is telling this prophet, go to the brook, I will feed you there. And then he sends ravens. How much food? How much fufu? How much kenke? I mean, how much kenke? How much? How, 
how much bread can they pick with their beak? You know, not much at all. But he, the word of the Lord came unto him, and so he complied. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. All right? And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Now you might say, God, if you actually send me to the brook, how come it dried up? Aren't you the same God who could have supplied me with water to drink in, from this brook, no matter what was going around us? But the brook dried. It dried for a reason. And that's what we get into. Sometimes your time in the place comes to an end. Because God wants to move you. It dries up. And in this case, it dried up. And not only that, listen, we're going to read in this story, you're going to find out that when he went over to the place where God sent him, it was for a purpose. Because usually when God is in your life, it's not only about you. If it was only about us, believe me, we should all be at home resting like some of your brothers and sisters are doing as I'm speaking. <laughs> Waiting for the titans to come on on television and to watch it. Hello. How come there are people who are playing for money? The TV stations uh, have the program on, the commercials they're selling for their money. They are about their profession. What about you? Your profession is this. Hello. You do this, I forgot about theirs. It's about time you, you got a TiVo anyway. Something that, you know how TiVo you will, what do you call those things there? DVR your, your, your TV programs. You know what DVR is? Boy, you all do. That's great. What life we're living in now. But anyway, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the prophet is the one who spoke it. So we know that he actually heard from the Lord because there was no rain. Would you agree? Let's move along. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, oh, another time. He, he fulfilled one act of obedience when God told him to go tell the king there will be no rain. Because he spoke it, and until he speaks again, there will be no rain. Alright? Then he, God tells him to move and walk, go over to the brook Kerik, and he went and did that. And now, he's about to get another instruction. So when you walk with God, God will give you instructions upon instructions, upon instructions. He wants to give you enough for the day so you can come back to him the next day to get instructions again for the day. Why? Because he wants to spend time with you. If he told you everything that will happen in the next 10 years, you probably won't go to church. Come to church. Because you already got it. So God will give you itsy bitsy little bit at a time so you always will need him so you keep on coming. Praise the Lord. Maybe not you guys, but the ones who are not here anyway. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, okay, verse 9, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now that is really quite funny. Sometimes you read the Bible and it's funny. Now, God, how can you get a widow woman to sustain a prophet? Because in those days, widows were the poor, the very poor. Because women didn't really work. They depend upon their husbands bringing the bacon home. And they depend upon their children to grow up to take care of them. And so in this instance, for God to tell the Elijah the prophet 
to go so that a widow woman can sustain him, he also had to have faith. Because all the while going, he said, boy, I don't know what I'm going to find over there. Well, let's see, verse 10. Arise. So he arose and went to Zarephath. He arose and went to Zarephath. That is obedience. Just do it. He heard that God tell him to do it, and he did it. He arose. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, I want you to get it. And as she was going to fetch it, are you getting it? He says to her, go and fetch me some water. And as she was going to fetch it, which means that had she not gone, she would not have gotten the next instructions. And as she was going to, oh, praise the Lord. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Bad economic times. So how do you then get an increase during bad economic times? How do you get an increase in bad economic times? How do you do that? The woman has already said, I mean, by what she said, she lets us know that there is nothing at home. Prophet, if you thought you were coming to our house so that we can feed you, you know how, <laughs> you know how, uh, what is the name of the, the movie? Whitney Houston is in that movie. Huh? Eh? The preacher's wife. Remember the preacher's wife? How the preacher will always go and eat a Sunday meal with the family. And, and, and really, it's gotten to the point where uh, that, that is the MO for some pastors, where some ministers, Sunday, they're looking for which house. Uh, and they'll be going to maybe I should start that you know <laughs> in these bad economic times <laughs> uh, we have a schedule you know uh, we save uh, Pastor Carissa from cooking and we come over to your house uh, you're on on Sunday Hallelujah! come on alright we're coming alright and so, uh, it says here, yeah, the woman says, hey, we got nothing for you to, <laughs> and we may come there, you say, pastor, we don't, no, no, not you here. <laughs> and Elijah said unto you, fear not. She spoke out of fear. She spoke out of fear. And so, and so Elijah says to, to, to her, listen, fear not. Because that's not faith talking. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. What did she say? That she was going to make a cake. Remember that? And she and her son were going to eat it and then what? Die. That's fear speaking. And so she says, okay, go and do what you said, but make me a little cake first. Why first? Why first? And why is it that the prophet was asking this widow woman to go and cook something, bring it to her, 
bring it to him first to eat before he actually, she actually feeds her son. Do you know how it appears, how it looks like for the widow to watch her son hungry, sitting at a dinner table, and this boy sees his mother giving the itsy bitsy cake left to this man wearing a beard, more than likely. And all he is think, thinking is that boy, it's all over. I, 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 I'm going to die without eating even a cake first. But that shows you the obedience and the submissiveness of that son as well. Because the woman, let's look at verse 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon the earth. Now listen. He has given her a word. She has to now receive it and then act upon that word. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to do the word. I listen to me here. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to actually do it. She could have heard it and not gone and not gone to do it. Because it's a good word. It's coming from the prophet. These are bad economic times. And he is telling her, if you want increase, you got to do me first. If you want increase, I must go first. Now you should underline this in your Bible. And it says, and she went and did. That's what this whole series is about. If you want increase in your life, you too should went and did. I know it's not good grammar, but I'm just... You two, you two should went and did. According to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did it many days. Would you agree many days is increase? Yeah. In fact, let me show you something. Would you agree that, that Elijah was a prophet? A priest of the Lord? Listen to what the scripture says about what you do with the first. What was left as a meal before she can cook her last meal, the last dough, Elijah said to her, bring to me first. I want the first of what is left. Because if you want more for what is left, give me first from what is left. Did you get it? Go to Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44, and let's look at the scripture. Ezekiel 44, I believe I want verse 30. Ezekiel 44, verse 30. And it says, And the first of all the first fruits of all things, would you agree that cake is a thing? The meal is a king? And every oblation of all, of every sort of your bread, shall be the priestess. Oh, the first shall be the priestess. Did you get it? Imagine who is the priest of this house. Pastor Arthur. I heard that. The minister of finance says, Pastor Arthur, the case is closed. And so it means the first, the first, the first of all things shall be the priestess. This is the word of God. 
you shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough. Just in case you don't know what a dough is, it's mud. Okay. <laughs> you shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough. But this is the reason why. This is the reason that he may cause the blessing to rest in that house. That's exactly what Elijah did to the widow woman. Let's go back to where in, in, in uh, First Kings uh, chapter 17. Let's go to verse 14 of this, of this chapter. And uh, uh, Elijah says, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be due, oh, I said verse 14, 14. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the curse of oil fail until the day the Lord send rain upon the earth. If the meal shall not waste, it means, and the curse shall not fail, it means that, that a man of God can pray the blessing to remain on that house. Isn't that what we read in, in uh, Ezekiel? Uh, isn't that what we read in Ezekiel? Let's, let's read Ezekiel again, chapter 44, verse 31, 30, 30, 30, 31. Ezekiel 40. And the first of all the first fruits, uh, I'm reading, he shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause a blessing to rest, to rest in that house. And that's the blessing that rested uh, in the house of that widow. So that through that, during the time of bad economic times, the famine, she could be taken care of. So this is the reason why God sent the prophet to Zarephath. He didn't send him there for himself. He sent him there for the widow and her son. Are you getting me here? The principle of this is this. That if you are dealing with bad economic times, dealing with famine, dealing with lack, dealing with anything that comes to, in a sense, diminish, minimize, and, and cause for there to be a need, the way to meet the need is through a seed. And if you understand that, you will never, during bad economic times, ever in any shape or form even fear or be afraid of what might happen. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of... Thank you for watching this program. Uh, Every so often, I like to come to you and to speak to you about how uh, we want you to help us to spread the gospel all around the world. You know, uh, it takes uh, quite a bit of uh, work to put things together uh, regarding uh, a TV program uh, that brings out the word of God. And so we want to uh, give you an opportunity, as I said every so often, uh, for you to send your love offerings uh, uh, to this ministry so we can continue to uh, uh, present this word of God and not only on the internet as we do but also on television stations around the world. Now let me tell you this, that it is truly a blessing uh, to be called by God to teach his word and it's also a blessing to have uh, the uh, privilege of sharing this word uh, on television and other forms of media. And television, of course, is quite an expensive proposition, and yet our God is, is our source. And so we choose uh, in this ministry to sow into other ministries so that we can harvest what the Bible tells us and that we will harvest if we sow a seed. And I should tell you this, that as the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, they give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. 
So with that, I want to say to you that God will himself see to it that every seed uh, that you sow into this ministry or any other ministry uh, will come to you uh, in a harvest form more than it is that uh, the amount that you sold. Now, uh, quite often, uh, people hear this and they say, oh, okay, I will do it next time. Uh, why don't you, at least today, say that you do it today? And why don't you take a, a pencil and a paper and, and write down what you see scrolling at the bottom of the television and, and uh, send us a, a, a love offering, a letter, something in the mail to let us know that you are there uh, and we will be very, very happy uh, to know that uh, God is uh, sending us uh, supporters uh, and partners to help get the word of God out. You know, uh, we pray for our Veen audience that this word as they hear will make a mark on their lives that can never be erased. We pray for your, our Veen audience that uh, as they watch the program, whatever the need might be, that God will sovereignly assist and help them uh, with that need. Uh, we pray for our partners, uh, also uh, those who decide to send us a love offering every month. We pray for them, uh, not only myself and, uh, and my wife, uh, Pastor Carissa, but also uh, the intercessors of our church uh, to pray, to see to it that, uh, that our partners' uh, needs are met, that God himself is uh, uh, doing a mighty work in their lives because we believe that uh, your seed of love of an offering um, must uh, return back to you with a, a love of a harvest back to you. And whatever the need might be, uh, we trust that the seed uh, that you sow into this ministry will meet that need. May God continue to bless you as you watch us. May God continue to increase you more and more. May God himself uh, open the windows of heaven to pour out a blessing upon your life, such where you cannot even contain it. Uh, we want to thank you for the work that uh, uh, you are doing in the kingdom of God, uh, in viewing this program, uh, in supporting this program, in praying for this program. It is really a wonderful thing indeed to have uh, people out there who uh, partner with us and contribute so often to this ministry. We have been on and you've been helping us to sustain us. God bless you. And let me tell you this, as often I try to remember, I remind you on this, remember that Jesus is Lord. And with all you're getting, get understanding. For the word of God changes lives and changes mine and yours. And love never fails. God bless you. Return, return, return.